Hey guys, what's up? I just want to share a couple things kind of concerning 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 where there's like a list of drunkards and whoremongers etc. won't inherit the kingdom of God or um, and it's mentioned uh, you know those who abuse themselves with mankind or abusers of themselves with mankind and I just want to point out that I saw that there's a similar phrase in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 which says for whoremongers for them that defile themselves with mankind we see pretty much the exact same phrase here and then we see for men stealers uh, for liars for perjured persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine anyways I don't even know what perjured persons is so that's something that I gotta look into but I wasn't really sure about men stealers because you know with today I bet that a lot of us would think this or maybe it's just me but when I see men stealers kind of think of like an adulterous woman or a woman who has an affair with like a married man and so she's kind of like taking that married man away from his wife in a way so you know you're a man stealer but that's definitely not what that means and so I wouldn't have really understood that without really looking into the commentary I was kind of confused but I found this commentary that says um, it means properly means one who steals another for the purpose of making him a slave, a kidnapper. Okay, this is the common way in which people are made slaves. Some indeed are taken in war and sold as slaves, but the mass of those who have been reduced to servitude have become slaves by being kidnapped. Children are stolen from their parents, or wives from their husbands, or husbands from their wives, or parents from their children, or whole families are stolen together. None become slaves voluntarily, and consequently the whole process of making slaves partakes of the nature of theft of the worst kind. What theft is like that of stealing a man's children, or his wife, or his father, or his mother? The guilt of man-stealing is incurred essentially by those who purchase those who are thus stolen. As the purchaser of a stolen horse, knowing it to be so, participates in, a, in the crime. A measure of that criminality also adheres to all who own slaves and who thus maintain the system, for it is a system known to have been originated by theft. This crime was expl expressly forbidden by the law of God and was made punishable with death. In Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, and Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 7. And so Exodus chapter 21 verse 16 says, And he that stealeth a man, he that stealeth a man, men stealers, and selleth him, okay, steal a man for slavery, and sells him, or if he shall be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So that's kind of a meaning that, you know, I didn't really understand just looking at this, what men stealers are. And so it's kind of understand, important to understand the historical context of, you know, what this meant. But I think that it should be undeniable that those who defile themselves with mankind is speaking of men sleeping with men uh, in the way that men should, uh, you know, are to naturally sleep with women. Um, so this is speaking of homosexuals, and this also adheres to women sleeping with women and we see this spoken of multiple times in scripture it's always condemned and so this is just included in there and there was a brother who said something maybe like it's masturbation or something abusing themselves with mankind but that doesn't really make sense so you know I wouldn't accept that um, and I certainly wouldn't accept Stephen Anderson's interpretations he says that it's like the female version of a whoremonger and I was thinking today you know what the female version of a whoremonger is it's a whore okay or a harlot these are words that are already used in scripture for that the female version of a whoremonger is a whore uh... you know and he comes up with these other bizarre interpretations and it's all really pointless anyways in a way because um, you know it's undeniable that this this is speaking of homosexuals they defile themselves with mankind okay it's men sleeping with men leaving the natural use of the woman okay uh, we see that spoken of in scripture but also if we just step back at first corinthians chapter six verse nine which i'll look at and i'm definitely going to go into this more when i try to go through stephen anderson's whole teaching and refute the thing but i'm just putting this out there now just because it's fresh in my mind first corinthians chapter six verse nine uh... it says you know know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god 
And so, you know, anybody who doesn't turn and repent to the Lord can't be saved. They won't be saved because they're not going to, they're not turning to the Lord. Um, you know, Paul said that all are sinners, Jews and Gentiles, all have sinned and, and fallen short of the glory of God. Okay. Um, and so this is speaking of the unrighteous in general. And it says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor, idol nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified. So any sin can be forgiven. Uh, you know, the only sin that's the unforgivable sin would be to deny the Lord unto the death, to where, the, to where there's no chance of repentance after a person dies. But there's always a chance for repentance, uh, as long as the person is willing, you know, we have free will. So um, there's no, you know, Stephen Anderson tries to say that homosexuality is the fruit of a person who can no longer be saved, who is no longer allowed repentance from the Lord. And that's absolutely insane, because the Lord is not willing that any should perish, and so um, it's up to men, we have free will, and... Uh, any sin is forgivable. Murder, anything. So this whole list here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it's not some exclusive list. It's just uh, random, uh, you know, I mean, some popular, I mean, some big it's common sins, I guess. Um, but it's not exclusive. It's, it's anything. It's just, he's just giving a variety of these common sins, okay? Uh, that were that were big around that time, and so homosexuality was a big one. I guess today it is too. But uh, you know, so there's no doubt that abusers with themselves, or abusers of themselves with mankind, is speaking of homosexuals. And you look at all the commentaries, and you, and you'll see. And I know it's not a good argument to say, well, you know, a majority of people believe this because the majority is not always right, but. Again, I'll just say, you know, a lot of people agree on this. Uh, I haven't really seen any other interpretations. You know, Stephen Anderson's just way out there. And it just makes sense within the context of Scripture. And for Anderson's argument, uh, you know, it says that such were some of you, but you are washed, uh, you are sanctified. So there were people who were drunkards who repented and turned to the Lord and they got saved and he says that you know a homosexual can't repent so that's why he has to change the definition of this but um, even if it meant something else which it doesn't this isn't an exclusive list so homosexuality would still be in there okay um, otherwise you could make the argument that other sins that aren't mentioned um, you know, a person who committed those sins couldn't repent either. So it's just, it's just uh, absurd and uh, unholy and wicked is his false interpretation. So I just thought I would share that with you. Maybe you wouldn't know what men stealers are either. I just learned that, and now I got to find out what perjured persons are because I don't know what a perjured person is. Maybe I should know, but. Uh, so men stealers talking about men kidnapping people for slavery, basically selling them, and uh, abusers of themselves with mankind. Those who defile themselves with mankind is the same thing when Paul is speaking of in Romans: men sleeping with men, leaving the natural use of the woman, and uh, so it's homosexuality. And the same same thing goes for women, and. Uh, you know, it, what is it in Exodus? We see the commands of God, you know, that a man shall not lie with another man. They should be put to death. So all over scripture, homosexuality is condemned. But that doesn't mean that a homosexual can't be saved. Yes, they can. Obviously, many have been. Praise God. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, bend any way on the interpretation of this. And also just realize that the whole context... 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It's not an exclusive list. He just named a bunch of the common sins. Just gave a variety. But it's endless. Okay, Any sin can be forgiven. Okay? So, that's it. And thank you for watching, listening. God bless.